I had the idea somehow, the erroneous idea that I was gonna turn 50 and things were gonna slow down and I would sort of like settle into being, you know, kind of like being able to downshift a little bit and which has not happened at all, if anything. I feel like I'm revving up for a big decade of work and execution and growing the business and um, so definitely, although I will say, I feel there's an opening up that's happened as well in this decade so far. An opening up of, you know, awareness around the fact that life is precious and finite and that you don't have to sort of hold it so tightly. Like you can be working really hard and without holding these ideas and projections so tightly about what you're supposed to be and how it's supposed to go. And you can bring a little bit more ease into the fold, I would say. This year is very special because Goop is turning 15, which is crazy. Like, I can't even believe it. When we started kind of as pioneers in the clean beauty space, first from writing about it, then selling other clean lines, and then incorporating our own, you know, it was not so easy to make clean products that really worked and the raw materials were very expensive. So a couple things have happened over time because the consumer has become so interested in clean. I think it's driven economies of scale and, you know, we can find amazing ingredients that aren't going to make the, the price point of the product you know, really hard to approach. We have this amazing team here and they've been so smart about choosing the right ingredients that are gonna be active and actually work. The difference in our line, you know, we have more actives, more botanicals, which drives the price point up, but these work and they're really beautiful. The textures are amazing. They smell really good and they feel really luxurious. So the idea for Good Clean Goop has been kicking around the Goop headquarters for a long time, like I wanna say a decade, because when we first ideated the Goop Beauty line, um, we also thought about like, how can we also really democratize this intersection of beauty and wellness? Um, and so we originally started with the Goop Beauty line and, and over time we just felt more and more passionate about creating clean, efficacious product at kind of a more accessible price and for a broader audience. So, you know, they call it mastige in the industry. There's, I love that word, um, some, between mass and prestige. And so um, we set out to create this and I'm really proud of what we've been able to do. I guess what I'm most proud of is the way that we've stayed true to ourselves and been able to persevere through, you know, fluctuations in everything, economy, culture, COVID, you know, um, and I, the, the way that we've been able to keep like deepening into like who we actually are a group and what we care about. And this idea that, you know, we exist to offer people the opportunity and products and ideas to sort of think about, you know, how they can find true agency and really express themselves. And, um, and, you know, I think we're really clear about our values and it's nice to see that they've resonated more and more over time. And, you know, things that we were really, really early on that people thought we were nuts, you know, now it's sort of like these widely adopted things. And, um, and it, to me, it just, is such a good lesson and just be who you are, like stick to your guns, find your resilience and keep going that you can build a brand that's meaningful, you know, if you really mean it. September's a big month around the uh, Faltro house, as we say. I actually stole the idea of getting married near my birthday from one of the original Goop employees, um, Britt Patner is her name. She had her, her rehearsal dinner was her 30th birthday, and which I thought was so cool and such a fun kind of synergy and a beautiful way to sort of make your 
birthday about something bigger. So when Brad and I were discussing a wedding date, that sort of floated through my head and I thought, wouldn't it be kind of fun to do it like that? It creates like a magical week, you know? It's like a really nice celebration of my birthday, of each other, of our family, our blended family. The blended family has been amazing and a journey and now it's like one of the things that brings me the most happiness in my life. Um, I had a moment this summer when we were at our house on Long Island and Brad's kids were there and my kids were there and we were in bed so we go to bed ridiculously early and I just heard these like guffaws of laughter from all the kids downstairs. I almost burst into tears because it's hard to blend a family and it's not intuitive and nobody tells you how to do it and you know just to to stick with it the idea of creating something new community making it safe for everyone and then you know getting to a place where people feel comfortable in that new iteration of a family i'm i'm proud that we've been able to do that i have been so lucky with my teens like well, probably when Apple, I would say, was about 13, you know, we had like a year where I was like, oh, wow, okay. Um, but actually, my kids have been, like, I have I kind of didn't have the horrible teen thing. I think because I've always been very, very honest with my kids and I've always empowered them with a little bit more freedom and responsibility than they thought they were ready for. So they've treated it kind of with reverence and like, you know, I've always said, I don't need to give you a curfew unless you give me a reason to give you a curfew kind of a thing. So, um, you know, they, they're just, they're responsible and um, they've never done anything too crazy. And I really loved having teenagers. I mean, Apple's in her last year of her teenage years now, which is so crazy to me that she'll be 20 on her next birthday. I don't quite know how that happened. <laughs> She's just so much fun to be with. It's so wonderful having a daughter because you have like this amazing best friend and you know, we like to do the same stuff and she's so funny and she's so smart. And so it's just like, it's amazing. And then I'm kind of in awe of this woman that she's become and with all of her you know, points of view and that are really differentiated. She's really strong and it's just, it's amazing. There is a real mother-son dynamic that I think is so delicious and, and so special. And he's such a thoughtful person. We kind of bond over music and we like to sit and talk. It's funny, like he's a real, he likes to go deep um, and also you know he's 17 so he has lots of freedom in his own life and you know I'm just kind of there and wait for him to come in and out and <laughs> grab some time with him. They're actually both very intrigued by fashion and kind of into fashion. They both really like fashion as an art form and as a form of expression. It's really interesting to see them both um, kind of choose that and, and my son really you know it's kind of how he tells the world who he is through his cool style. I'm trying to reframe it more as that we'll be free birds and not empty nesters so that I can at least try to convince myself that there's some kind of a silver lining <laughs> or something. Um, but I think if I, I think how you frame something is actually really important. And an empty nest sounds so sad and lonely, and I'm sure I will experience those feelings if my daughter's departure was anything to go by. But I also do really believe that life, especially for women, comes in chapters. And we define ourselves by these chapters, which are so intense for us. And, um, and this is really gonna be a new chapter for me. You know, I've been raising these kids for 20 years and it's been my focus. And to not be tethered in the same way to the house or to the school calendar, I don't know, maybe it'll be not as bad as I think. We'll see. So my birthday this year, well, it's 51, yeah. so it's not like such a big 
splash to be made. And last year we kind of went all out at <laughs> multiple dinners in different places and stuff like that. So this year we'll just have a really small dinner. It's on a Wednesday, so we'll be home with the boys. And then our anniversary, it's just gonna be Brad and I, we're gonna have date night. Yeah. Super simple. I mean, my husband and I joke all the time. It's like, we're so predictable. We basically do the same thing every morning. We wake up at about 6.30, meditate, um, then I, I exercise, I make my smoothie, um, you know, if I have time, I'll, I'll do a sauna, and he's very into the cold plunge, so I'm trying to build up my resilience to the cold therapy. Um, lots of water, trying to not eat anything too processed. I think sleep is super important, and nutrition is super important. And then, like, as cheesy as it sounds, like actually befriending yourself, like loving yourself, forgiving yourself, because that creates peace and then that sort of comes out from within. I've been very dedicated to trying to be, you know, a bit healthier than normal, you know, because I, I love like a baguette and french fries and wine, so trying not to do that so much. Um, and just being, you know, going, trying to get through this period of life, like with being really kind of conscious of where my body is and trying to be as kind to it as possible. <laughs>